What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome back to another episode of the Portsmouth Career Mode series. This is episode number 119 guys. If you did miss the last episode, we had a very eventful episode. I do recommend you go back and watch that if you have missed it. We managed to win 2-0 against Norwich in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. And that means that we are going to go through to the semis in that one. Another opportunity to get some silverware as well in the Champions League. And we have managed to go through to the quarterfinals in that as well. And then we drew at home to Man City. So a really good episode to be honest. And now we're going to be going straight into things with the quarterfinal match already against Borussia Dortmund. We're going to be playing at the Signal Aduna Park. And for this match we are going to be going with our fully strengthened side. This is the side that we will be going with for the Borussia Dortmund match. The first leg of the Champions League. We've got Manjon, we've got Ibe, Rafa, Prosperi, Neves, Chaloba, Brooks, Lascelles, Yedlin, Bin and Williams. And we've also got Ulrig in goal. Welcome to EA Sports live coverage of the Champions Cup quarterfinal. Today it's Borussia Dortmund against Portsmouth. Let's go off to the signal in Juna Park. Now. And we have a little look at that there. The teams that are left in it, we've got Man United, we've got Real Madrid, Chelsea, Juventus, and I believe Bayern Munich was in there as well. So some very big teams that are still left in the Champions League. And the first test is going to be against Dortmund here in the quarterfinal. And we'll have a little look at their side. And of course, we did a career mode with them at the beginning of the year. And it is interesting to see that they have made no signings whatsoever. So that really is terrible for them, isn't it? They haven't signed a single player that has gone into their starting 11. They've just gone with the same side from the beginning of the career mode all the way to now. That really is insane when you think about it. They haven't signed a single player and you just got to hope that next year that will be fixed for FIFA 16 career mode because that is just ludicrous. Prosperi's done really well here. He's going to have a shot as well. He's saved by the keeper but we put it into the back of the net and it's Jordan Ibe that gets the first goal of the game. And once again, this chance has been carved out of nothing. We've been dominated by Borussia Dortmund. They probably should have had a goal themselves. But when you look at that, Prosperi is using his pure strength just to get around the defenders there. Ibe heads in the rebound though and it's good to see that we've managed to get the first goal of the game. More importantly, because that is Jordan Ibe's 8th goal in the Champions League and it means we've got the away goal now so that's going to mean a lot. Especially if we can hold on to our lead here. Surprisingly, we've actually dominated the game. Although it feels like Borussia Dortmund are creating more chances. They haven't had many chances that have actually found the target yet. They've only had one shot and it's not even been on target. So, we've really had a good start to the first half of this game. Maybe if we can get another goal, that will surely see off the result. Here goes Jordan Ibe though, sprinting around the defenders. Borussia Dortmund aren't really catching up very well. And wow, one of those slide attempts that just has so much power on it. But the accuracy that time was just not on point. Here they come, Marco Royce trying to cut inside. Finding a Mobile who has a shot. And that's their first real chance on goal for Dortmund. Bye, have a great day. What the hell just happened there? Are you joking me? Oh my god. This must be a joke. This seriously is a joke. He let the ball go through his legs. I swear that's just what happened. Look at this. He just let it go through his legs. You're kidding me. Wow. Yeah, the EA really want Dortmund to win, don't they? Because why would the defender do that? What a silly mistake. And it's Socrates, the defender, that gets the goal. Wow. He's the one that equalizes here. And it's 1-1. This is a bit dangerous, isn't it? Late on. Bender gets the ball back. He passes into Leitner. And he gets it back to Bender, who finds Leitner. Don't take him down. Oh, my God. That should have been a penalty. Wow. Wow, we got lucky there. That should have been a penalty right at the end there. We end up drawing 1-1 against Dortmund. We come away with the spoils, technically, because we got the away goal. And that means that we are technically ahead on aggregate, even though we did get a draw. It would have only been 1-0, but that silly mistake at the back. I don't even know what happened there. And we really did dominate the game from start to finish again. More possession, more shots, but it's a silly goal to concede. It's 1-1 on the night. And hopefully we can go to the home match and actually score a few more goals. But now it's the first of the month. We're going to take a little look at the squad report. But I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Instead of talking about the players that have grown, I'm just going to go through the squad report as a full squad report. But I'm going to go a lot faster than I normally would. 
And as always, if you do want to pause on any player in particular, then of course feel free to pause the video and you can take a little look at the players that are growing. A lot of the players aren't going to be growing too much more because we've had a lot of growth already. Players gone up by plus 3, plus 4, plus 2. Good growth, I have to admit. We have done very, very well this season. Buying the players that we needed to get that have improved the team a lot. And we've got players like Asson Belonga. He's not even getting into the first team anymore. Considering he's 80 rated and he's not even getting into the first team, that is a bit disappointing to be honest on my side because I signed him to be a first team player but I just don't have any space for him anymore. The next episode will just be getting through April and then we're into May and then after that we've got another episode which will take us up to here and another episode which will be the end of the series. So in about 4 to 5 episodes time we will be finished with this series and we will be looking on to FIFA 16 with the first career mode that I'm going to be doing and I will be making a video very soon about what team that I do plan on doing for FIFA 16 and other things that I do plan on doing with regards to videos. So I was planning on simming this match but then I looked at the table and we're only one point behind Chelsea. I can't risk simming a game that could end up losing us the title. Aston Villa are certainly not a pushover. They've got good players in their side and for that exact reason I thought I was going to play this match in the end because they've got Rolando Ahrens actually. I just realised we sold them to him so it'll be interesting to see how he does. And we have a strong side ourselves, but we are resting a few first-team players for the, well, second leg of the Champions League against Dortmund. So we are resting our centre-backs, we're resting our full-backs and our first-choice goalkeeper. We've got Tom Heaton coming back into goal. Boga showing great determination to get inside and Jeremy Boga again scores against Aston Villa. He won a penalty in the previous match we played against them and now he scored a goal for himself. And it's a really good run by him as well. Poor defending to be fair but he's using his strength to get past all of the defenders, hold them off. Could have easily got a penalty himself there, could have gone down but he scores the goal himself and he gets his second goal in the Premier League. We only had two shots in the first half. They had two players injured. One of them went off the pitch. I believe that was Mane. And just before half-time, they had Fabian Delph injured as well. So they're really getting a bit unlucky with the injuries. But hopefully we can hold on for a win here. Maybe get a couple more goals in this match. See off the victory and take us above Chelsea in the league. They get the cross into the middle and, wow, Luke de Jong is certainly an aerial threat. And Jeremy Boga outmuscles Wanyama, but he's still got the ball here, Wanyama. Probably trying to get a cross into the middle and he does get a cross inside and they get the equaliser. Eventually, it's Luke de Jong playing it back inside and Fabian Delph, the player that I thought was injured, gets the equaliser in the match. Jordan Ibe, maybe he can rescue us this game. Maybe he can get a goal for himself. He's done really, really well there. And I probably should have cut back inside once again. It was a good attempt on goal though. But I don't think that was going to be going in. There we go. That's a fantastic through ball. He's onside as well. And is it Zivkovic that's going to make it 2-1? Yes, it is. He gets the goal, makes it 2-1. And we have got the goal to put us back in front. Really good attacking on the break and is Zivkovic of course finishing that one off. He only needs one invite to take the shot and he dispatches his first shot on target past the goalkeeper Zoet who was on rushing and that will be his 17th goal in the Premier League so far. Aaron's in the 90th minute. I just know what's going to happen. They're going to score from this aren't they? Aaron's is going to get the assist but no... The goalkeeper does well there, Heaton, and we're going to kick this one up, and that will be full time. We end up getting a 2-1 result against Aston Villa. Boga and Zivkovic getting on the score sheet, and that was a really, really well-fought victory. We have drawn nine games, though, and we are now two points ahead of Chelsea with a game in hand over them. We are really starting to do well, and hopefully this is our opportunity to take a commanding lead over Chelsea. The second game against Dortmund in the Champions League quarterfinal and it's the home leg against Borussia Dortmund. So it'll be interesting to see if we can hold on to our lead or maybe get a few more goals. I've gone a bit defensive for this one. And in the second leg we are going to be seeing that Manchester United got beaten 6-2 in the first leg against Real Madrid. So we just got to hope that we don't come up against them. That is if we can hold on to our lead here against Borussia Dortmund. 
it's 1-1 on aggregate as we go into this match. We've only got an away goal that separates both of the sides. And really, we just got to hold on. Maybe catch them on the counter-attack. But make sure that they don't score more than anything. They get across into the middle. And no, make sure we clear this away. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh no, he's getting a red card. And it's Seven Bender that gets sent off. They're down to 10 men. And that has surely got to be an advantage for us. They were trying so desperately there to win the ball back. Gonzalez with some brilliant skill there. Taking it past Bender. And he gets himself sent off. That's a good little pass into Jordan Ibe. Is he going to get there? Yes, he is. And Jordan Ibe finally gets for on goal. And with our first shot on target, we get the goal that we need to put us 2-1 in front. And that will probably kill off the leg now. If we can get another goal, that is. They went down to 10 men. It's a good ball in the first place. But it's poor defending to let Jordan Ibe go for on goal there. Socrates should have done better there. And we end up scoring from that. Jordan Ibe really is on fire in the Champions League. Getting his ninth goal. We don't want to concede. Not now. Not after all of what has happened. And really, did Royce just miss that? It's one of those days for Dortmund. They've had so many opportunities. Royce missing a really good opportunity to put them in front. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We are through to the semi-finals of the Champions League. And once again, it's that man, Jordan Ibe, getting the one goal in the match that we needed to take us through. We would have gone through anyway if it stayed at 0-0. But it's good to see that Jordan Ibe gets another goal in the Champions League. And it really does seem that Zivkovic is killing it in the Premier League. And Jordan Ibe is killing it in the Champions League. And it looks like we're going to be facing Barcelona in the semi-final. And the teams that are left, we've got Juventus, we've got Real Madrid. And it's certainly going to be interesting to see which one gets to the final. And it is confirmed that we will be playing Juventus in the semi-finals of the Champions League in the next episode. Hopefully we are one of the two teams that end up making it to the final. But this is going to be the end of the episode, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed. And if you have enjoyed this episode of Career Mode, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already, guys. FIFA 16 may be close, but this series certainly is hotting up. And it seems like every episode that we get closer to the end of this series, it seems to be getting better and better. And the games are getting more and more tense. Hopefully we will be able to make it to the Champions League final in the next episode. But apart from that, guys, I'm going to have to leave it there. And I'll see you next time for another video. Thanks for watching.